These are five places in Kyoto that I enjoyed the most. Hi, I'm Mike Dalton, and this is Dalton's Detours. So I spent, between my two trips, probably maybe seven, eight days in Kyoto. Um, I went to some of the places twice, uh, in the spring and in the summer. And in the end, these were the five places that really stood out to me that I enjoyed the most. Now, I'm not including day trips. Um, I'm just talking about some very obvious things of Kyoto, but also a few things that, you know, just I particularly liked that I'm not sure they would show up on a top five list. First of all, the Kyoto rail station really stood out to me. Uh, not only was it kind of high tech and sophisticated looking and, and just pretty cool, um, it had one of my favorite things in Kyoto, which was Ramen Street. And when I first heard about Ramen Street, I thought it was going to be a street like on a side alley or whatever. And it's actually at the top of a mall um, inside of Kyoto's rail station. And in it, they have more or less every regional type of ramen that you can get. And so you can kind of explore around and you get to pick and choose your ramen. And uh, I just really enjoyed that experience. Uh, I did it um, in the spring on the school trip and then I did it again on my own. And it was, it was easier to by myself to kind of wander around. It was a little less busy. I'm not a ramen connoisseur, so I cannot really say whether this is the best ramen on earth or anything like that. But I have to say from a guy from Ohio, having a choice of you know, 15 or so different ramen shops. Uh, I really enjoyed the experience. Arashiyama is the next one on my list, and it is a pretty obvious place to go in Kyoto. Um, it's the bamboo forest, basically. But this, ha this comes with a caveat, and that is to arrive early. Um, I got there around 7 a.m. and got a chance to walk to the bamboo forest before the crowds really hit. Now, with that said, if you do that, the town's shut down, but if you walk across or walk down the river, uh, there's a nice little kind of a park on the top of a hill that kind of overlooks the ravine. And I really enjoyed that experience a lot more than when I went in the spring, kind of around noon or two o'clock, and it was just absolutely packed. It was, it was a nice, relaxing morning, and then kind of towards lunchtime, I was able to grab some food, and then I, that was it, I headed back to the center of Kyoto. So Arashiyama is definitely worth it, but I do think you have to be prepared for big crowds if you go at a very uh, peak time period. The Gion district, I didn't get a lot of chance to see in the spring. And so when I did get a chance to walk around a little more in the summertime, it's just a cool little area. You know, there's not that much to do. Um, I started out at Yasaka Shrine and I liked that shrine a lot, maybe because I was kind of getting there as the sun was going down and all the lanterns. And then I just kind of wandered through the streets of the Gion district. It's definitely worth seeing kind of the old traditional look of Japan. And it's something I didn't really see anywhere else when I was in Japan. Nishiki Market was one of my favorite areas. I just really enjoyed, it was a rainy day and the market's covered and it's kind of surrounded by malls and things like that i guess outdoor malls and um the market itself i, I like markets uh it, it was very different it wasn't it was just basically one long street a uh, covered street and it really just seemed to have everything you could imagine food wise and i just i just enjoyed walking around that area i did a food tour later and it included the market as well so we got some of the history of some of the stalls uh, so definitely worth checking out. And to be honest, probably my number one thing is not anything greatly shocking in Kyoto. It's Fushimi Inari. Again, I went in the spring. It was extremely crowded and I didn't have as much time. When I went back this summer, again, I went early and I walked to the top. And that in and of itself to me was a, a big suggestion. If you can manage to get to the top, um, the further you go up, you walk up five minutes, uh, the crowds start to disperse. And it's just a really cool walk. In fact, to be honest, um, I kind of wish I'd have spent some more time there. It's not a, again, it's not a surprise that Fushimi Inari is on the list, but I did find that it was well worth it. But again, like Arashiyama, it comes with the caveat of going early. 
I really did enjoy Kyoto. To me, it's a it's a must see in Japan,、uh, especially if you've never been. If you've never been, you know, Tokyo, Kyoto, especially,、uh, are the two places you to me you have to go. And I understand it's touristy a little bit and so forth, but you know, there's places are touristy for a reason. That does not mean. I mean, I did day trips to Uji and Nara, and I went to Hir- Hiroshima, but Kyoto, in and of itself, I would highly suggest spending two, three, four nights there、um, to just kind of get a chance to see the city. Compared to Tokyo, it was a lot smaller, but the transportation system wasn't quite as easy to use. I have to say, at least for me, I stay kind of near the train station. It's probably not the best place to stay if you're wanting to experience Kyoto. But I was also using Kyoto as a place to do quick trips and things, so being by the rail station helped. So those are my five things that really stood out to me about Kyoto. I have no doubt that other people will go there and get a completely different experience. So I'm really curious if you've been to Kyoto, what you would suggest,、uh, you know, the next time I visit or when other people go.